congratulate Donald Trump on his victory tonight. He earned it, and I want to acknowledge that. Now, you've all heard the chatter among the political class. They're falling all over themselves, saying this race is over. Well, I have news for all of them. New Hampshire is first in the nation. It is not the last in the nation. This race is far from over. The campaigning continues. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley vowing she will fight on after being defeated by former President Donald Trump in the New Hampshire primary. The former president's win builds on his momentum toward the GP GOP nomination, and it deepens questions about a path forward for Nikki Haley, his now lone remaining rival. Here now to talk more about it, the former chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party, Caton Dawson. Caton, welcome to you. I was just talking uh, to one of our political colleagues about the path forward, and a lot hinges on money, right? Every campaign does. I know you've been in talks with some of the big donors Owners that Nikki Haley is looking to continue to get support from. What are you hearing? They're firm. I mean, we've we've had two contests with uh, 100,000 or so voting in Iowa, uh, a couple of hundred thousand in in, uh, in in New Hampshire, and and this isn't a coronation. We're getting ready to come to South Carolina, our home state, and that's going to vote between 600 and 750,000 people. Uh, that's going to be an expanded base, and we're pretty excited about that. We, we've seen this story before with Nikki Haley in 2010 with 3.5% three, and a half percent, three, and a, three weeks out, and she almost won it outright against some of the people that are on the stage for Donald Trump right now. She, she's been a successful politician because she speaks to the taxpayers and not the legislators. And uh, so I'm not surprised on the endorsements. I'm not surprised last night. That was a good showing. I am surprised on how Donald Trump tried to make it personal again, talking about Nikki Haley's dress, her names, and, and poking all the jabs. But let me assure you, that's not going to play well, well in South Carolina with a former governor who's fairly beloved. I get this as a contest, Marnie. I understand. Uh, and it's going to be a fight to the finish. But we're not going to just let, you know, 400,000 people pick who the next president is. He's not the incumbent president. He lost. He lost in, in 2018, 2020, and then 2022. So, so we now uh, are, are having to reset and decide, Marnie, do we want a smaller Republican Party or do we want a bigger Republican Party? Uh, for them to try to sell that Nikki Haley is a moderate is laughable in South Carolina. With my friends that are Democrats, Marnie, couldn't get elected as Democrats in northeastern United States, that they can only get elected as Republicans. They're so conservative. So uh, we'll see how this plays out. Donald Trump will do his big stuff. We're, we're excited about our race in South Carolina. Our donors are excited. We, we are built to last. And, and la at last, Marnie, we outlasted the Dirty Dozen. I mean, Nikki climbed up from 0% to being her and Donald Trump. And right now the republican party's got to decide what they want to be who they look like angry mean the chaos or do you want to expand the map with somebody who can attract center-right voters attract new people to the party our average voting age in south carolina in the republican party is 51 years old we're gonna to have to change the music pretty soon Right. Yeah. Appeal to those young voters, because I've been talking to a number of them lately who say we're being ignored by both parties and they are our future. But listen, Kate, and I, we just had a number up on the screen. Thirty four percent is what Donald Trump is up in the polls in South Carolina. So what does Nikki Haley's ground game look like over these next few weeks? She's going to come back in and introduce herself again. She's going to explain the differences between the two campaigns. Do you want chaos or progress? Uh, we, we get Donald Trump has a grip on a, a large section of the base, but we also understand that we've been here before. Uh, Nikki's underestimated in her political abilities. It's now a two-person race. We only really had about five days of being a two-person race uh, to show the difference. And what we're going to do is, is, is make it a real contest uh, of ideas of what a, 
a woman president would look like, what a conservative president would look like, and somebody who's reliable and doesn't play all the little stunts and games that the current president, that the former president plays now. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.